Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Jared Brandon, Gibson Brands. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you stymied him. He doesn't know what to do. He's looking <laughs> he's, around, he's trying stunned. to figure out what to do. <laughs> he's stunned. You can't say that. Tony Dudzik, Pick Guardian. Jared Brandon, Gibson Guitars. Hey, everybody. It's me, Todd Novak. Welcome to the Guitar Knobs Podcast. We are thrilled Woo-hoo! to death that you are listening to our show again, hopefully, yes. and maybe even for the first time. That's exciting, too. How can we'll you listen again for the first time? Way. No. How can you listen Two. again for the first time? No, no, no. Stop it. <laughs> Anyways, um, I can't explain how excited we are because uh, it would take too long. So, without further ado, guest, who are you? I am Dan Pihachek from Old Blood Noise Endeavors. Oh, yes. my goodness. Boy, have we got a bunch of requests to have you on the show. I don't know what you're doing to people out there, but you are affecting <laughs> them in one way or another. Well, I hope not to disappoint. So. Between the light and the microphone, <laughs> you know, it, it's like, it's now you got to go around. You If you want any recognition at all, you have to go everywhere with that. Just like slash his top hat or something. Yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> Uh, so yes, Dan, briefly, before we dived into the deep end of the show, what's the two cent version of who you are and what you do? Uh, so, uh, yeah, so I work at Old Blood Noise Endeavors as their, uh, digital pedal designer. So I do all the code that makes the pedals do the things they do. Uh, and then people might know me from the Dan Explains It All video series, uh, which is our, our tech demos for those pedals. So I just kind of do full-on walkthroughs of, uh, of everything they do. And uh, yeah, wear a bunch of other hats too, but those are kind of the, that's the, right. main, the bulk of my story, why I'm here. You know? What kind of hats do you wear? Oh, a supply chain hat that just looks like a pile of knobs right now. I've got... Uh, no, I was just thinking that you, you'd have like a beret, <laughs> yeah. uh, a, uh, you know... No, no, Tony. No, no. Tony. He's, he's already got two accessories. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're like Dan, I don't know who's this Dan guy, but you've seen all the videos, you're like, okay, he's the guy with the lamp. Lamp? Well, usually, a lot of lamp. And the silver and, and, microphone. And the silver microphone. And the mustache. Yes. Those three things. And any the, any and the one guitar, of those three the, things. And the guitar wait, wait, wait. playing guy next to him. Right. That guy. <laughs> is, it a, is it a mustache or a mustache? Ooh, that's a good question. Dan, mm. what would you consider yourself with a thing under your nose? I guess it depends on whether I'm wearing the beret or not. Uh, <laughs> but usually I'm not. So I'll just go with mustache. Okay. I think. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, like I said, we're going to have a really good time because... This is a very momentous day. Like, I can't believe, like, we, we really do try, and whenever we possibly can, to get um, interviews in and or around a release date of a new wonderful thing. Hmm. And boy, did we nail this one. Hmm. This is the day that the sunlight oh. has been introduced to the world I Holy didn't realize that smokes. was just today. Yes. Yep. Oh, wow. Lined up lined up very well. Yep. Oh, First yeah, thing I saw in the day. morning, I was like, Shazam, that's the pedal we have. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Fantastic. Way to go, Gomer. <laughs> Shazam. <laughs> um, golly. <laughs> so anyway, all the things that he says. Anyways, <laughs> we're going to d- dive deep into that and, and just kind of get a better understanding of, you know, some of the approach that, uh, that old blood noise takes to pedals and and your role in that. I mean, you you have a, a a huge part of where we are tending to be steered in the guitar gear world uh, due to what you guys are uh, pumping out. So more on that later, everybody. <laughs> First of all, we're going to take care of a few things. Those few things are. I kind of feel like I sound like Paul Stanley a little bit. That. First of all, we're going to take care of a few things. I don't know. Well, that was a horrible Paul That Stanley. really was, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, bad. That was terrible. That's, that's worse I than just, my Italian accent. <laughs> I, just, I just thought to it myself, might be. like... I think I'm with you, Jared. Yeah. Do I, do I know who Paul Stanley is? Am I thinking of the wrong person? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, I'm I'm a little bit embarrassed. Good, you, <laughs> but that's okay. You ought to be. I, I I I like I don't mind it. So without further ado, we, I wanted to share something. Uh, we got a couple of announcement type thing in the bobs here, mm. and one of them was we get some fantastic mail sent in, and I wanted to share this particular one. Uh, so here we go. This is from. Uh, where'd it go? It's coming up. Lauren Stern. And uh, this was the subject of uh, uh, Trouble Booster, 37 effects. Hey, guys, I just wanted you to know, I picked up another great pedal that I never would have known about if it wasn't for your show. I've always brushed off Trouble Boosters thinking I don't need one. But when you had a few guys saying how great they are, I had to pick up the Tombstone at 37 effects and see what I was missing. Mm. Yep. And you and your guest were right. It just gives my gear that extra push that I didn't know I needed. I have the Car Skylark amp, and it has a built-in attenuator. The Tombstone brings the dirt and clipping all together. What a great pedal. That was really nice to hear. That was nice. Is that yeah. the one that I tried out? Yes. Okay, I, I passed that off to Rob. And that's the one that has the switch that has two uh, deep sides in addition to the standard? Um. Yeah, I, th- I, yes, 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 yes. So and that, yeah, that's, that to right, me I was the it. nicest part. Um, normally, trouble boosters can be very scratchy to the eardrums. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that one in particular, I liked having the ability to uh, filter in more bass on one position and even more bass in the other position. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Seeing that on a lot of trouble boosters being built right now, I think it's it's a I mean it's a good. St- Good solution to a common complaint for, yeah. with trouble boosters. Well, it lets you play with different kinds of guitars without going, well, can't use that sound. Hmm. Um, anyways, uh, and, and uh, Lauren's uh, Four on the Floor is a tombstone, as just mentioned. Uh-huh. The Dry Bell Vibe. Hmm. Oh, nice. The Makano Wah. That's one of the old, the old ones. The super old, man. They're like from the 1800s. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize they had electric guitars I, I back like, then. I have 30 of those. Yeah, yeah, 30 of them. And the... Uh, I don't. Fuchs plush valve job. Ooh. There's, th- that just sounds dirty, all of it. Just sounds dirty. Right. Yeah, even the name. <laughs> I, I have a Fuchs Lucky. Who's the Fuchs? Fuchs Lucky Seven amp. Yes, I've tried that. It sounds really good. It's sort yeah. of like a. It's a, a Marshall in a in a small package. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, Dan, are you familiar with the uh, Makano Wa? I am not. That's a, that's a new name to me. Yeah, it's uh, from uh, I guess Mike Mike Makano hmm. or some Mike McConnelly maybe. I don't know. Yeah, so anyways. Not familiar with it. that one either. Yep. So now we are. Now we got some research to do. I know, I know. <laughs> and I didn't do it right before that. I just read the thing. I got to send a letter and I'm trying to make things happen here. Way to go, um, Todd. Anyways, so thank you very much to uh, Lauren Stern. Um, also has a pretty cool moniker, Six Broken Strings. <laughs> Six Broken Guitar Strings. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I've, I've been there. <laughs> so um, the other thing is, we have a very exciting deal going on. What? Yep. Uh, with, huh? with Positive Grib. Grib? Oh, grib. that new thing. <laughs> I was trying to hold in a burp. So grib. it sounded like Grib. <laughs> <laughs> so with Positive Grib, uh, they sent us a Spark Amp, and we have had a ton of fun with it. It's great. Um, I'm actually practicing with it almost every single night. Really? Truly. Good for you. Yep. Um, because everybody's asleep, and then I can just plug in and go. Are you using headphones? I am. Okay. Sounds fantastic. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, tonight in in the in the fourth installment of this, we're going to tackle a truly incredible aspect of the the app that accompanies the Spark Amp. Do tell. It's called Auto Chords. Mm-hmm. You know what Auto Auto Chords does? Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> auto chords it automatically displays the guitar chords for millions of songs oh yeah now you're saying wait a minute what is that how do i get all these millions of songs what do i have to subscribe or something no no it's a free app included you buy the amp it's free free all you well, do what if you play by ear then you can not look at this that's right <laughs> i guess um 
So, it, but it's just the chords. It's not showing, you know, like staff music or anything. It's, yeah. It's, it just lets you help. It helps sometimes you play Sometimes that song. helps because sometimes you need a, you know, is he playing a B minor there? Or, exactly. Uh, you know, exactly. Blah, 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 blah. So all you do, you connect to the, to, you can actually connect directly from this app to yeah. your Spotify. Oh. To Apple or even YouTube. You pull up the song and it instantly shows you the chords. Wow. And if it, for some reason, doesn't instantly show you the chords, you just have to hit request, I think it's acquire, I think it's, yeah, acquire the chords, and just like tick tock, tick tock, bang. And the whole, all the chords for the song sh- shows up. Now, see, I never tried that when I was testing it out. That sounds like a very cool feature because, you know, every once in a while, even so. You're someone, pretty good, but I can imagine. Seasoned as I am, yeah. says, huh. Let's cheat a little well, bit. Especially some of those Beatles songs. I mean, th- those uh, are deceivingly there's, simple. There's some, there's some crazy chords in there. Oh, uh, you time know, time. that's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. No, I guess deceivingly complicated. That's what I meant to say. Simply okay. deceiving. Simply, simply, simply they're simply, simply you know deceiving. I mean. Anyways, <laughs> um, so yeah, so you choose any of these songs, and the the smart app, uh, the Spark smart app, is gonna um, auto display this in the chords in real time. As you play. So it'll play along. As I've said before. As you're playing the song, it's showing you the chords, right? As I've said before, that app is more than 50% of of that that whole thing. It's outstanding. And for me, I will often get stuck on something where I'm like, oh, crap, I'm I'm stuck in this particular part of the song. Mm -hmm. It lets you either slow down the song by half so you can like really get it. You can even loop that section, Mm -hmm. any section in the song if you want. Is that like Michael Bo- rode the boat ashore? You have trouble with that one? <laughs> Are you now? Now you're just making fun and making me feel bad because yes, I do get stuck on that. I don't know French. Sorry. Um, <laughs> what? It, <laughs> anyway, so all you need to do this is really, really simple. Everybody, the Spark Practice Amp with the auto chords, ten thousand tones, and more. You can get that. Uh, you can sign up to win one. What? Win? Yes. Win? Positivegrid.com forward slash guitar knobs. Well, I'm going there right now. Do it. And if you don't want to wait, you can get one for under 300 bucks. And there's and there there's deals all over the place on those things. Yeah. It, it is an outstanding grab. And the and the app and everything is free. It's free. Wow. That's it. So thank you very much to Positive Grid for uh, hooking us up with this deal and and passing that on to uh, our listeners we really I can't, appreciate I can't it. wait to, to give one of these away to one of our listeners it's gonna be mighty cool yep speaking of mighty cool let's find out what's going on in our music world this week tony's gonna kick us off then we've got to hear from our man dan yes well you know todd this week i received a nice email from one of our listeners oh one of our supporters we got a twofer tonight john anglin and John uh, wrote me an email. He says, well, I know that, you know, listening to the podcast that you, meaning me, Tony, mm-hmm. like inexpensive guitars that you can customize. And, I, and, I think those are great. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm always, mm-hmm. I love that stuff. Yes. So he, uh, he suggested uh, these Harley Benton yes, guitars. Yes, I've heard about those. And um, I've seen them. I haven't played any. I know that I've made pick guards for several of the models because they're pretty non-standard when it comes to things like that. I usually have a guard that comes in that I duplicate. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I mean, I've seen him on Reverb, on eBay, but he bought his directly. There's apparently a, a German uh, music store mm-hmm. uh, that has these in stock. And he said that uh, the one that he most recently purchased was a, kind of a Cabernita style, a Tele. And uh, the guitar was like, 200 bucks and shipping from Germany and then any taxes and things like that was about another 100. So for about 300 bucks, he got a guitar that he is super super pleased with. That's awesome. And um and then he went on to say that he bought his uh, his son a uh, uh a Gretsch style, like a 6120 Gretsch big box uh jazz box. And same thing, you know, that one was maybe about 100 bucks more, but arrived safely from Germany in about Three days after he got what? the shipping notification, so it's it's pretty great stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna check this out. I, I went to the oh, website. They got a junior, a, a double cut junior, for two hundred and thirteen dollars. Yeah. Well, I mean, now one caveat: you do get what you pay for. But he's been very happy with the ones that he's you got purchased. Really fancy with caveat, didn't you? Yes, I, it's a caveat. Caveat. 
Um, but they have other things that are, you know, there's some uh, Rickenbacker style kind yeah. of things that are uh, probably not. I mean, just because of the body shape, not kosher to bring into the U.S., but uh, they have tellies and strats and Les Paul styles. Um, the body style on a, on a Rickenbacker is, uh, is, is trademarked, too. Oh, uh, mm. the that boils <laughs> my blood pressure. <laughs> They're not made of blue spruce. <laughs> <laughs> Although they might be. But anyhow, um, thanks, John. That's, that's a great tip, and maybe some of our listeners can check that out, too. You know, a lot. Of, he says a lot of times that you know these on Reverb and eBay they're a little more you know overpriced. And he said he, in his research that it was actually less expensive to buy them from uh, the company in Germany um, and have them shipped than, right. than it would be to buy on uh, on eBay or uh, Reverb. So and good tip. Uh, German stuff is poor, built poorly. Said no one ever. Well, it's not <laughs> German stuff. It's, I know. I was trying to. But okay. They're, anyways, they're hey. imported from into <laughs> yes. into Germany first. <laughs> we won't ask where they're coming from. Anyways, <laughs> um, Dan, Dan, are you still there with Dan? Are you Dan? I'm are you still with here. Us? Okay. I noticed what? that on podcasts, I tend to just nod while people are talking, as if people can see. Me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we I'm can listening. see. You. I, we we, <laughs> we can. can see. You. Yes. yes, we placed a camera in your space. <laughs> Indeed, uh, your spirit animal, an American Standard Poodle, is in our chair across from us. Um, <laughs> I don't know that. Well, I don't know why I picked that. I really don't. Dan, what's going on in your music world other than the obvious thing that happened today? Yes, I know. We'll, you know, we'll talk about that later. Um, Let's see what is going on in my music world. I feel like I have I have two things right now. We'll make them quick. So one is uh, I'm in a band called Plain Speak, and we, like many bands, didn't really do much the last year and a half. But just this last weekend, we got together to work on some new songs, which was very exciting. Had you know a bunch of ideas kicking around over the last year and a half, and to get to you know take them to my friends and say let's flesh these out into full things and start talking about recording them and really get that process going is. Uh, uh, exciting, good, good sense of uh, forward momentum. Now, is that plain P L A N E or P L A I N? Uh, that is P L A I N, uh, okay. and then the word speak. So, like, yeah, plain speaking. Yes, um, got it. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty cool. What uh, kind of then music I feel is like? It? Uh, so it is sort of uh, death cab for cutie ish, like early indie emo, you know, early two thousands kind of indie emo mm-hmm. kind of stuff. There's nice. a little bit of various other surprise influences listen to a lot of blur and rem and things like that but it's, it's kind of firmly in that kind of softer side of emo category but now yeah. you know what would be actually hilarious if i said oh so is there a lot of rever- reverb on it and you're like no i hate reverb <laughs> 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 i'm just a, i'm just a straight how, through the amp guy <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how i will structure you know so we, we didn't play together for a long time our first show back was in july and i was like all right i'm gonna build build out this pedal board to revisit these songs you know what are some new pedals to add kind of have fun with it and of course you just you just keep loading up the pedal board this sound and that sound and then you realize most of the time i have like an overdrive and some light reverb because that's really <laughs> all I need most right. of the time. But it was like every pedal throughout the set had that one moment. You know, all right, now it's Dweller's time to shine or it's time <laughs> for the tensor or, or whatever. But in general, most of the time, I didn't really have that many pedals on. <laughs> right. You're like, man, here's something. Uh, hope you like James Taylor. He played the whole song and at the very <laughs> end. Like, <laughs> <he> just, <laughs> <laughs> some crazy thing starts ramping up into oblivion. You're like, ta-da, I'm Dan. <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, I mean, cool. essentially, yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> right on. Uh, Jared. Yeah. Hello. So, uh, wife and I and the dogs went to North Carolina last week and uh, had a good time. We went up in the mountains. Uh, our friends have a place up there. It's very beautiful. And I just took my uh, Gibson Dove uh, that my dad had for a long time and that's so i just had that guitar i'm really glad you rescued that because i thought i was talking to my aunt (laughs) 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 i got you (laughs) okay did you bring uh both flavors of oreos with you so i took my gibson dub with me (laughs) and that's every night there's this it sounded like a bear got caught in a bear trap every night and i was like i was like paul he's a you know, fellow who owned the house. I'm like, Paul, every night it sounds like a bear like fell and broke his paw or something. Cause he's just 
There's this <laughs> every night, and I'm like, "What is that?" He's literally he gave a me an bear answer. crapping in the woods. He, yes, yeah, he's a constipated bear. He couldn't <laughs> give me a straight answer. Every day it was something different. He was like, "Well, there's cows down there. You know, they're probably they may be in heat or." You know, and he would just give me a different answer every night, man. But but I don't think he cares because I think he hears it every night. It just it seriously, it sounds like an upset bear. That's like really a weird. Bear in in distress, actually. Did that disturb like, your guitar playing though? No, hmm, that's I good. played over it. The old Gibson Dove was that sounded must have great, amazing on so. the porch, man. That porch was beautiful that you showed. Yeah, us. nice big porch, and then we had a fire pit, and the neighbor came down. We had a good time, and then uh, uh, drove all the way up to Ohio and dropped off my wife and the dogs at our home in Ohio. I grabbed, uh, I grabbed the Stratocaster with um, it's a uh, stacked pickup I I made for that, and it sounds really dark and good, and that's awesome. doesn't it doesn't sound like a weak single coil. You know, I think a lot of guys struggle with the uh, Stratocaster bridge pickup in uh, in a lot of different uh, rock and roll applications. So uh, I brought it back to Old Hickory, where I live near Nashville, and and uh, I've been plugging that in and kind of playing. Is it, that. Do you literally live on Old Hickory Lane or Street or what it is? Uh, Old Hickory Boulevard. Okay. I, I don't live on Old Hickory Boulevard, but I. I live off in uh, Old Hickory Village. Yeah, my my uh, wife literally grew up on that street hmm. on Don John Old Cash's Hickory Lake. Boulevard. Yeah, yes, what yeah. a coincidence. Well, anyways, hmm. um, so that's that's a good story, man. I appreciate that. That's kind of Whoa! it'd be interesting to hear what that is. I hope it isn't, in fact, a Bigfoot or Yeti. <laughs> I'd love to know what it is, and it could have been a mile or two away because it's. You need some I mean, when you're goggles. way up in the mountains, I mean, it could be anywhere, literally, because wow. you're really high up in the mountain. Yeah, cool. So. Too cool. Too cool. Yeah. Hey, Todd, what about you? Well, yeah. let me tell you. Um, uh, this week, it was practice, practice, practice. We got a couple gigs coming up, and I just was laying into it. Oh, wow. And I decided... Whole band, all in one room? Uh, no, just, just 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 me this week. Okay. Um, and what I was doing was trying to be mindful of... I, I overthink everything, you know? Shocking. <laughs> so I actually spent a lot of time... Like, a, like, if I'm playing, and I'm on any kind of stage at all... That where's the amp pointing? Mm. At someone's face, mm -hmm. at someone's belly, mm -hmm. you know. So I actually put them in different like different heights to hear if there was because sometimes you'd be like, "Hey, this sounds great," and then you move and you're like, "Oh my gosh, it sounds awful." Yeah, you're hearing like tones that are coming out that are no good and that hurt the ear sometimes, yep. Yep. especially if I'm playing. So I did spend some time just trying to make sure, like, "Hey, do I have any?" You know, kind of like messing around with an EQ. What can I do if there's something that's that really is not beyond not pleasing for rock and roll, but like it just flat out hurts your ears? Because I've we've all been at shows where you want to get up close and you're like, I can't. This is this amp is killing my ears because mm. it's it's just there's a f frequency or the way it's pointed or yep. whatever it is. So I'm just trying to be mindful of that, trying to be trying to help people in the audience you know yeah no, that's a good idea not run away from what i'm doing <laughs> have you tried tilt back stands that you can put your, your amps on i have one yeah um and but see the other a uh, good thing that we have going is my bass player puts so he puts one of his cabinets on my side and i put one of my cabinets on his side right so my cabinets are both on the upper half i get the upper bunk so to speak. Okay. Because he does, you know, his are, you know, big. Yeah. Uh, so it actually works out pretty well. So that usually means it's pointed kind of like right at my butt. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Well, yeah. that, that's good. I mean, that's safe. Usually, I mean, where you really run into problems is if, if it's like at ear level. Yeah. And, you know, that's just no bueno for the, for the crowd. Yes. And so I have considered, I actually bought... <laughs> This is my lo-fi version of like being awesome. I'm like, I'm just going to get two door stops. And I <laughs> put the door stops. <laughs> it worked for a little bit. You know, it just tilted it up just enough. Not really enough. It didn't really nah. work. You needed about 15 <laughs> degrees at least or so. So, 
anyways, uh, that's what that's what I was. Well, that's at. cool. I mean, that's uh, that's very thoughtful of you. I well, I hope so. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I want people to, good to consideration. Yeah, yeah. I want people that's to good. like lose their mind and rock out, and not like lose their mind while they're rocking out because it and hurts so hearing. bad. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that was a ton of fun. Thank you so much, all of you kind gentlemen, for sharing all that business. Hey, Todd. Oh, Tony, what's going on? Well, you mentioned that you were practicing a lot at home. I am. Were you using a pedal board? I am using a pedal board. I'm using my pedal board, as a matter of fact. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. How do you connect all of those little boxes? I know you have a lot of little boxes. Yes. I think the, some people the call the them effects pedals. pedals. All the amazing pedals, yes. How oh, yeah. do you connect all of those things in a nice, Velcro. clean, easy oh, way? Together. No, together. How, yes. do, how do you how do you patch them together? I patch them together with my beloved tour gear designs uh, patch cables. Jared, you've got a few. I've got several of them, and I use them every day. Yes. And you know what? I will even tell you, um, my drummer, Matt, is is borrowing my uh, uh, HX Stump. Mm. Uh, to, I thought to, you said he was going to wire his amp or no, his drums together. I, 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 I <laughs> let him borrow it for, he just wanted to check it out. And so I took it off the board, and I realized that when I was practicing, and I was like, I've got a huge gap between mm. these two pedals. Luckily, they I reached for, I think it was, is it eight? 18 inch cable and i was like oh i just bridged the gap right there nice bang um not a common occurrence but so you're saying they come in a wide variety of wide variety of sizes how about in terms of shapes in shapes they've got s shape cables yeah which is so if you're going from like the bottom of one to a side something like that to the and then the c shape cables which is two tops together Wow. It's fantastic. Love it. You can go get these yourself at tourgeardesigns.com forward slash, forward slash, the <laughs> discount, forward slash, <laughs> our guitar knobs. <laughs> Good save, Toddy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the cables are very good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. You can go. You can go I'm to Tour Gear. German. Yeah. You're not German. Go to tourgeardesigns.com forward slash discount forward slash the guitar knobs, and you're going to save ten percent off your entire 10% order. Ten percent. Ten percent. Not a whole cable. Being all reasonably of them. priced. It's a double digit number. That is. <laughs> these are these are nice flat cables. There's many different sizes. All the sizes. They're not terribly expensive. Not terribly expensive. No. And they do the job. And they are fantastic. Right. They I, I I absolutely love them. So tourgearsdesigns.com forward slash discount forward slash the guitar knobs. Or I think you can probably just put guitar knobs in on the code thing. And that sounds well, easier to do it that work. way. Anyways, thank you so much to Tour Gear Designs for sponsoring our four on the floor. Jared. How about a little bit of this? <laughs> That's very villainous. <laughs> All right. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three. Four on the floor. Dan from Old Blood Noise Endeavors. Why don't you give us your four on the floor? This is a hard one. I have to say it. So, okay, let's do this. The first in my chain is going to be the Thorpey FX Camouflage, Ooh. which is hmm. probably a bold choice to kick off with. Uh, but anyone that knows me these last couple of years knows that I really like a flanger first in the chain uh, because of the way that it hits drive stages later. There's just this extra shimmeriness and you don't get that. It's like distortion into a flanger, super jet plane harmonic kind of stuff. Flanger into a distortion uh, just gives this motion and brightness and the, the, the Thorpey in particular has like a treble control and a blend control. So you can really give it this subtle kind of bright voice that just gives this little bit of motion. So I feel like that that's my first just to give me uh, a good a good baseline of modulation that I can that I can hit. I, I like that idea. And in fact, I was inspired because um, I saw I think uh, Hockstrasser put a, made a video about playing him for uh, in front of a, a drive or distortion. I think I caught that on Instagram this week and I'm like, I'm going to try that. And I tried it and I'm, I think I did it wrong. Cause it sounded like doo doo. <laughs> it was just, it was so it would hit certain, like when, when it was flanging, it would hurt, hit certain tones and it would just, it would sound like, like a screaming awful thing. What animal? It was, <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, yeah. And I do, I should note that I like to keep the resonance basically all the way down. I might put a hair in, but uh, for the most part, it's not there. So it sounds more chorusy than, than flangey in terms of like, it's not a super resonant flanger, 
But what I like about that flanger is just the way that, you know, a chorus can get a little uh, kind of seasick or a little too lush in front of a drive, but a flanger has that just like, I don't know, that Im- implacable softness to it. That's just a, it, it gives you extra harmonics, but it doesn't overwhelm the sound, at least to my ears. Maybe everybody else is like, Dan, could you please turn off the flanger? But uh, for me personally, <laughs> I, I really like it. Jared, that's do you cool. like a flange? I love the flange when it's barely noticeable, but it's kind of still there. That's kind of yeah. like my, my favorite it you know if you're especially with single coils, I think it just kind of gives it a little more color um, to kind of make up for the thinner sound compared to a a fuller sound from a humbucker. That's just my that's just my uh, liking, I guess. But yeah, yeah that, of course, that's I've exactly. Got, I I don't know. I think I have three or four different ones, possibly. Nice. So. Yeah, that's exactly how. Like I'm playing a telly you know, 90% of the time. So it's, uh, it just, you know, there's something about that, that interaction where it helps counteract some of the thinness and just, yeah, just give a little early motion to the whole thing. That's oh, pretty yeah. I like cool. That. I, like I like that, that idea. That. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try you it again and maybe I'll do it right this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just subtle, just make it more and more subtle all the time. And gotcha. then you, w- there will be a moment where you'll forget it's on. I was actually, I was testing. I was like, okay, I think I know my four on the floor as we're about to record. Let me just play around with those four pedals just to kind of experience it just mm-hmm. as those four. And I kind of forgot that the flanger was on. It was just like a nice motion. And then I turned it off and was like, oh yeah, I, I want it back on. It didn't, it didn't sound like there was a flanger there. Uh, it, it, uh, just, it just sounded nice. Cool. What's up for number two? Yes, number two. <laughs> Enough flanger talk. All right. So <laughs> this was the hardest part because I love light overdrives and overdrives with fuzzy characters. And I'll usually have a few drives on a board to craft a bunch of different kind of structures of gain. Uh, but I wanted to just do one for the floor on the floor. So I figured the small sound, big sound mini was the way to go. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we had that. Did just, we, we tried that one out, I thought. <laughs> Here at nice. The, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah for, for the podcast we did. That's a cool pedal. It's it's really special the way that you can you know dial the bias all the way back and the gain all the way up and it's this kind of gated fuzz, but then you dial the bias back up and the gain a little bit down and suddenly it's just a dynamic overdrive and it's got bass and treble controls so you can kind of shape it and it really it it's one of those kind of special pedals that works both as a foundation overdrive. So you're playing mm-hmm. through a clean amp and you just want a little bit of grit. It can mm-hmm. help you get there. Or you're playing through a dirty amp and you can really shape how you want it to push that that particular amp's character. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's yeah a lot of a lot of versatility in it. Yeah, as I remember it was, you know, I'm I'm a big fan of the uh the EP drive or EP boost. Yeah. And um and this one I think as because of the the tone controls and 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 it had a little more flexibility, or you could sh- certainly shape your tone a little bit. Oh more. yeah, way more. Yeah, way way more. Agreed. Nice. What's next? Yeah. All right. So next up, uh, actually inspired by uh, Ian Pritchard, recent recent guest uh, of the oh, guitar yeah. knobs. Uh, he had the the Red Panda Lab Tensor in his four on the floor, and I thought, yeah, me too. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> because you guys are ganging it, up on me here. So it so there's two things, two kind of reasons for that. One is that it's a good way of within my four pedals, I have one that does weird stuff. So if I just, you know, I want to go off and kind of experiment, there's a lot of room to do that in Tensor. Mm-hmm. But then also there is an essentially an ambient setting where uh, if you set it up to just do a sort of simple reverse sound and you just mix that in where like put the mix knob at like a quarter of the way up. So you just have kind of your notes just reversing like pretty far underneath your main signal. And it gives this ambience that almost feels like a reverb, even though it's obviously not a reverb because occasionally you'll do a quick little three note run and you'll hear the three notes come backwards at you. So that it's, <laughs> it's definitely not a standard <laughs> ambient sound, but it feels that way. Uh, and so it, that's where I basically leave the tensor on that setting all the time and just kind of kick it on for certain, you know, verses and things where there's a little bit of just space to fill out. You hear little notes kind of coming back at you. Um, but you can also get wild with it if, if you want. Cool. So may, may I once more encourage you to give the tensor another shot. 
<laughs> I'm starting to feel like the kid that can't ride a bike. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'll give I'll give you a setting. I'll give I'll give everyone a setting because I'm looking at it right now. What you do? You turn your speed knob all the way down. Mm. You turn your uh, time knob straight noon, pitch knob straight noon, random knob all the way down, and then the mix, like I said, about a quarter of the way up. So that way there's no randomness happening. There's no time stretching happening. There's no pitch shifting happening. And you get just that reverse sound. And you, I think, I think oh, you'll find okay. that, I can get down a, with that. it's pretty approachable <laughs> like, there. Oh, yeah. okay. I like a good little reverse action there. That sounds good. So that is a pretty delicious number three. Four. 34. Tony's giving me the... F- <laughs> I said what, that what, you was number... That what is three. Giving you the well, I know. Was, now and then we're on to number four. That's what I was doing, but then you got me all confused. Oh. Tony, give, he's like... You're like a catcher, a bad catcher. Stop giving me signs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, how about curveball. number four? Yeah. <laughs> how about number four? All right. Um, so this is the... Strymon Flint. Ah, oh, uh, that's a great it, pedal. Yeah, it has actually been the last pedal in my chain for many years. It, you know, I I put it on the pedal board and it just has not left. Uh, everything else moves around in its position, might get swapped out here and there, but the the Flint just gives you a little bit of reverb and uh, that harmonic tremolo on there. I yep. just kind of can't mm-hmm. get enough of. But in particular, having that flange up first and the harmonic harmonic tremolo at the end is just a lot of subtle modulation that the the way that those two play together is is really nice so i could kind of leave those both on just all the time and, and forget that they're there until i turn them off and go oh my my sound is fine but it's just not moving anymore mm-hmm. that's cool yeah and i think that's that's the real key with uh, most modulation is keep it subtle mm. You know, you can't run any of these pedals full no. up with, you know, all wonky sounding and things like that if you want something useful. But I think the subtleties, especially on the Flint, that that is such a, I mean, that's a tough pedal to beat. It is. I think that that lineup would, it, naturally, I understand why you picked that to go with your acoustic funk set um, called uh, Rick James Taylor. <laughs> yeah, Rick um, James Taylor. <laughs> Good one, Don. You like that? <laughs> oh, dear. That's so dumb. Anyways, <clears throat> moving on, we have... Uh, oh, Jared just bought a positive grid, he told us. Sure. Yeah, that's fantastic. Dude, you're going to love that thing. Yep. I, I legit. Yeah, I, I, dude, I hear about it almost every day. I see it almost every day. I'm like... I'm just going to do it. I'm Let's going the for thing, it. man. Excellent. I like Surprise. that action. Dan, I can imagine how hard that must have been to choose four pedals, considering what Old Blood Noise does with creating so many amazing sounds. And not, not just the sounds. Something that I pay particular attention to is how you use the pedal. And I, I think you guys have put a lot of focus on that. I might be misunderstanding that, but... You know, with different types of controls, different types of tactile controls, sliders and stuff. We all love sliders. Mm. It's good stuff. So anyways, I just wanted to give a shout. Thank you for doing that. It makes pedal playing fun. Well, hey, thank you. That's I'm glad glad people are enjoying the sliders and the yes. that yeah, that idea of trying to make something that uh feels good to play with and that can help you get uh good sounds fast. I think that's that's definitely a, a priority for us is to not we, we definitely make some overwhelming things, some things that will do a lot of wild stuff. <laughs> yes. But we want you to be able to like, ah, let me just see what happens if I turn the knobs to noon and maybe, and, and a lot of the times, you'll get a, a pretty nice sound there that kind of introduces yeah. you to the pedal in a way that's, that's not too uh, <laughs> confrontational. <laughs> I was kind of uh, bugging out on the, uh, the, the Fault version 2 today. On, I was kind of looking around. I was like, oh, that looks like a fun pedal. The dual overdrive sliders, sliders. Yep, oh, it's a fun one. So good. Uh, Pushing those sliders for your for your EQ is just uh yeah. It's a great oh, experience. Oh, we're not talking about White Castle. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, it's a, yeah. Anyways, lots of, insert your slider joke there. Um, <clears throat> so, all right. So, Dan, we as we mentioned, we had really big news today. Uh, you just released the incredible sunlight pedal, which we had the opportunity to spend time with. And after kind of losing my mind for the better part of about 45 minutes, 
I talked to you on the phone and I probably made it a, a rude first impression because <laughs> <laughs> I think I was like like yelling on the phone. I actually it was like I was like yeah. I could think it was something I could like feel that. how like gobsmacked you were by the experience it like, was it just, awesome like, <laughs> yeah and i for a second was like is this one of those trick voicemails like, oh no todd is very excited about the new pedal that's awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, i i quickly followed that by a, a howl of, it might have been the the same thing that jared heard out in the woods <laughs> after um, eating sliders yes but that's <laughs> that's not far off from the sounds that i was making with that pedal i mean it was incredible yeah so i'm gonna sh- shut up which everybody's like thank goodness Finally, he recognized it. Okay, Dan, tell us about this amazing pedal. And then once you do, we're going to get into a little bit more of uh, helping to understand what's going on with Old Blood Noise Endeavors. Yeah, sounds good. Um, So yeah, Sunlight is our brand new reverb pedal, uh, which, you know, we can talk more about this later. But, you know, I joined Old Blood about a year into its existence and uh, was not involved in the design process. And then... In, I guess it was 2017, I just started getting interested in how does all this stuff work and started asking questions, messing around with stuff and basically eventually became the the full-time, you know, digital designer over at Old Blood. And Sunlight is kind of my my entry into our reverb lineup. So uh, people might be familiar with our Procession and Darkstar, which are both kind of known for their their hold switch. I mean, in, in addition to all, all of their, they have very interesting reverb voices and modulations and pitch shifting and things like that. But and the artwork. Each of them has a, and the artwork, of course, yeah, that they are just very, just very beautiful things to look at. Um, and they each have a hold switch, which kind of works, uh, I get you, like if people are familiar with the Electro Harmonix Freeze or the, the, the Game Changer Plus pedal, kind of pedals that grab your, your note and just sustain it forever. It does that kind of thing with whatever's left in the reverb trail. And so as we were working on sunlight and thinking, what what haven't we done in terms of a reverb? Uh, a lot of what we tossed around was dynamic stuff, just having dynamic interactions with, you know, between the, the player and, the, and their instrument and the, the pedal itself. Mm-hmm. And uh, messing around with different modes, you know, oh, we can have it modulate in this way, add these different delay lines. Oh, what if there's one mm-hmm. mode where it's, dynamically holds so when you play a chord it lets that chord in and then if you stop playing it just sustains that chord forever but then it's always ready for if you play another chord it lets that new chord in lets the old one fade away and sustains the new chord forever and we started playing around with that and suddenly it was like oh this is this is the thing this is it's Mm going to be our dynamic reverb pedal that does a dynamic hold function and it does it across all the modes every voice in the pedal if you Turn, turn the knobs in a particular way, it'll do that dynamic hold thing where it lets new notes into the reverb and just sustains them forever as they, as, um, as those new notes trail out uh, and you could just keep adding to it or back off and just let it run forever. And there's, there's, so there's a few different modes in it. There's one that has a modulation that kind of sounds like almost like a tape machine. It's just a very like lopsided wobbly LFO. Uh, so it's kind of uneven like a, like a tape machine would be. Uh, and then there's a comb mode, which is just super resonant. It's actually kind of inspired by the resonance of, of a flanger with short delays that kind of mm-hmm. uh, make do that resonant thing. And then a bandpass mode that has the does the random sample hold, like step filter kind of sound. Or you can just make it a fixed bandpass where you just voice the reverb with the with where you're filtering your uh, your signal. And yeah, there's just a lot of a lot of functionality it, to it, expression it, control and a secondary foot switch that you can assign to a bunch of things. So it's it's exciting to feel like I, I have really made my entrance in terms of Oh yes, you did old bloods <laughs> reverbs, you know? <laughs> well, I, I have to admit that, you know, I, I took this out of the box, plugged it in, and usually I can I'm pretty intuitive about you know making things work, and I and I said uh, I can't make this work, and I watched Dan explains the sunlight, and I was amazed at the things that this little pedal can do. I mean I uh, and I tried a few of the settings out and uh, and some of the things that you suggested, and it is pretty. I mean it's it it's amazing. It is pretty. It's a beautiful pedal. Well, it's uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> yes, that too. But but the things that you can do with this, I mean, it has just some incredible capabilities. And uh, and then you know you also sent along one of the uh, expression rampers, which to me, 
Yeah, that's, that's a, a whole that's, other. That's a total game changer in terms of. I've never liked expression pedals, mostly because I felt like I was doing a wah pedal kind of thing. This, yep. yeah. this definitely gives you the option. I mean, it 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 does. It's like a automatic expression pedal. I would say it yeah. gives you the ability to have some settings, and that 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 to me, the combination of those two, wow, wow. Aside from all the trickery it does, the reverb on this, the things that it can create, it was so pleasing to the ear. Once you figure out this, like, I can manipulate the reverb on this and still play over that, I mean, man, doors just open up. And so you can hit that with a fuzz, and you're just you're creating this incredibly blown-out, harmonic, tonal, just everything hit the alt button and then do something cleaner on top if you want or mm-hmm. or probably not dirtier it's, I didn't do that I wanted to hear their articulation of what I was doing on top of it mm-hmm. I was just and quickly I realized okay this can be so many things to so many people and that was one of the first things that Dan and I talked about okay doom guys are going to love this mm. I think or anybody playing like super heavy stuff more droney stuff this is amazing for that. And also, a whole lot of things in between. Any, you know, if you're doing any kind of gazy type stuff, if you're playing any kind of ethereal stuff, and if you're in a worship band, if you're, I mean, I found applications for my own kind of music, which I wouldn't run something like that through a whole song per se. But man, I was like, oh, I could punch this in. It would just sound incredible for this one or two parts. Right. In your case, you've got a bass, guitar, and drums. And this uh, actually gives you the ability to kind of put in, dare I say, keyboard sounding things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. With some extra fills. I, and I've, I've yeah, toyed with the yeah, idea of pad. buying yeah. the freeze many, many times. That was the other thing I said. I've almost bought the, the, the actual freeze pedal right. many times. Right. One of the reasons I didn't is because I felt limited by it. Mm-hmm. This completely opened up, so like limitations are gone. Also, um, soft switch, so I didn't have a clunk yeah. when I hit that thing. Yep, beautiful, beautiful. Yes. Yeah, that's that's, <laughs> that, that's that was the heavens agreeing with us. That's Jared's <laughs> grandfather clunk. Oh, you Sorry, heard it everyone. for everybody. The call you. from sunlight on high. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Dan, tell us a little bit about like how, aside from when you guys first kind of discovered, hey, this is this was the the thing that we decided we were going to do. Walk us from that inception to now. Yeah. So, sunlight. I think has an interesting story, uh, partially because, so, you know, you, we've been talking about how great it looks, uh, and the, the artist for it is a guy named John Carling and it's the same person we worked with for the dark star. So people mm-hmm. might recognize that, that the art style is, is the same. And so they, it feels like they exist in the same universe. You know, you almost picture them as, as two characters and want to kind of flesh out the whole story. But, uh, John sent, uh, uh Seth McCarroll, who is, is our creative director, um, basically he had drawn just a kind of a mock-up of a thing he was calling starlight and it had some knobs and he thought maybe it could sound a little bit like this. I don't know. It's just a, just a sketch that I uh, thought you guys might be interested in working together on a pedal again. And this was in 2018, maybe it, wow. it was, a, it was a long time ago. And we, we all kind of said, Oh, that would be awesome. It'd be great to work with John again. Um, let's, let's find the idea. And I don't know, at the time we were probably working on white cap or dweller or, so, you know, there's, there's always multiple ideas that are kind of floating around in the, in the idea pool. And we just hadn't picked up sunlight until I want to say early 2020, late 2019, we talked about it again and we said, well, what if it was another reverb? What if it had some dynamic elements to it? We tossed around some different potential mode ideas figured it'd be kind of built on the same platform as dark star and, and procession, uh, in terms of, you know, how many controls it has and stuff like that. And then it kind of fell by the wayside again, you know, other ideas got picked up, you know, picked up steam and put our focus into those. And then toward the end of last year, <laughs> I said, what about sunlight? Let's look at that again, tried out some algorithms, tweaked them, tried out some new algorithms, tweaked them. And then that's when we found that, that moment of, of dynamic hold where, um, it was funny because we were we were almost trying trying to push it through. I felt like I had some some good algorithms. The, the voice of the pedal is really coming together. It feels like something, 
And uh, Brady heard, heard that mode and he said, what if we could do the dynamic hold thing across this whole pedal? And I was, <laughs> as the product developer, I was like, well, that sounds incredibly hard and I'm not sure how to do it. And it's very frustrating that we're this far into it. And you had such a good idea that I truly cannot deny it. And I'm going to have to go figure out how to do that. <laughs> so it just kind of locked in at that point of like, all right, we've done some different revisions. We thought we were just about done, but then this amazing idea comes in. Turns out we're not done. Mm. So, just so plug into it a little more and, you know, keep, keep working on that software, redesigning the circuit boards. There's an extra control that, that input control used to not be there um, uh, until eventually it, it turned into what it is today. So, so, so just yeah. out of my curious curiosity, how long does it take to put something like this together? I mean, are we talking years in development or months or? So it really varies where in terms of active time, you're probably talking months, but from, from product to product, it, it might, you know, you sort of pick it up, set it down for a while, pick it up, set it down. Um, or sometimes things just for whatever reason, like we're, I, I can't talk too much about it, but the, the next thing we're probably going to be releasing, uh, I think I started working on also at the start of 2020 and mm -hmm. I kind of feel like I've been actively working on it this entire time. And it's wow. only just now finally coming together because it was, you know, this particular hardware thing, this particular software thing, then a supply chain thing, <laughs> and you know, just kind of kept getting pushed back. But in the meantime, we've been able to work on other things. You know, I've been working on sunlight simultaneous to this new thing. And so it's, it's tough to pin down exactly how long these things take, partially because you're always spinning multiple plates at the same time. Right, right. I, you know, I, I think that's, that's real important to point out that, you know, in the digital realm, myself included, I didn't realize how long that it takes for someone to sit there and do the code and test and then recode and all that things. Yeah. You know, we're used to, you know, pedal builders that just, you know, solder things together in an afternoon. And uh, the digital realm is just, yeah, it's a far more complex. Indeed. Thing. Yeah, I think that I think the thing that people discount a lot with digital stuff is that it's not just a you know a black box of of code. It's it's code that is connected to a whole bunch of pins that have to be connected to a whole bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. So when you when you want to add a different kind of control that you know reacts to your input signal, it's like oh well, how does the input signal even get into the chip in the first place? And then how does that yeah. chip read it and process it and output using a different pin, a, a different control for the other chip that's actually doing the sounds and it's uh, so much of the difficulty is just the software hardware interaction right um, it's like an electronic like, turducken yeah <laughs> <laughs> indeed <laughs> well said as per well usual said, Todd. <laughs> uh yes mm. so um now you released that this morning like to walk us through like I, this is You've been nursing this little baby here for a long time, and now you get to release it to the wild. Talk about what does that feel like to you? Strange. <laughs> it. I think you spend a lot of time thinking, oh, I just want it. I just really want it to be out in the world. I want to be able to tell people about it. And then that feeling sort of starts to fade, and then there's another couple weeks where you're just waiting. Mm, <laughs> and yeah. It's um, it's almost strange that it it suddenly becomes a real thing, and there's also this feeling of um, you know as you're finalizing it, you're you know we're about to shoot the video for sunlight, and I realize there's a little bug in it, and it doesn't really affect the video, but I think whatever units we're using, I want them to have the bug fixed just to make sure that that bug fix doesn't cause any other issues, and mm. so you're you're just kind of scrambling up until you know what feels like only a few weeks before the product comes out, right. And then for those few weeks, you just put it down and you don't think about it because there's nothing left to be done. It's it's a finished product and um, the demos aren't coming out yet. So nobody's talking about it and you're kind of sick of playing it. Mm. <laughs> and so for those few weeks, you almost forget about it. And then on a day like today, it's really interesting to shift from, you know, you're working on something for a couple of years, you get you just develop this complicated relationship with it where it's like, you love the way it sounds, but it was, it can be so frustrating at times. And you know, this mm. thing doesn't work, but then you figure it out. That's satisfying, but gosh, what a frustrating process to have to go through. So by the time it's done, you kind of feel like, all right, I, you know, I finished it. 
it's it's my baby, but also like I don't want to see it for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> um, you set you set it aside for a few weeks, and you just kind of don't want to see it for a bit. And then there's this weird thing that happens where then it's the day of, and you get to see other people get excited about it, mm. and that suddenly brings it back for you. So that like when I, you know, I I don't really want to watch the Dan explains it all because it's weird to hear yourself talk for, for 20 minutes, uh, 10 of which are just about expression and alt configuration. Mm. Um, and, but I have but to say, you, you do a great job of you know bringing it down to a level that almost it's, everybody can so understand. You, you do that. Well, I thank mean, you. That, that to me, I mean, it helped me incredibly. After I watched, you know, I, yeah, I spent 20 minutes watching the video, yeah. but I knew more about that, you know, the pedal than oh, yeah. going into it. Yeah, I'm, and when you when you stop focusing on isn't that light hot? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I like the microphone. <laughs> so, yeah, I, well, yeah, I'm well, really that's... good to hear that. Really glad to hear that. Um, you you must have like this morning woke up and just like hearing just all the chiming going on and everybody what 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 what. That's got to be just thrilling. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's so many positive things that, you know, it ends up, it's like tough to get other work done in the day because you just keep wanting to check your phone. Like, what what other good thing <laughs> might somebody be saying about this pedal? Because it, I, honestly, it was overwhelmingly positive today. And I got to good. Like, see friends of ours do live streams with the pedal. And so you're seeing them interact with the pedal and then people chatting with them and kind of asking questions and just to see people really engage with that thing that you've been working on for so long kind of in a vacuum, not, not in a vacuum, but only with the people you work with, you know, the, the, the dozen of us at Old Blood are the only people that really know this pedal. So then to see the world seeing it uh, can really bring a lot of that excitement back and make you think, oh, I guess I did make something cool. That's, that's yeah. fun. Nice. That is awesome. So, um, what, are, now are you already working on some, some new stuff or are you just like, hey, I need to take a break? How does that work for you? Yeah, I mean, there's, like I say, there's always plates spinning. So, you know, this afternoon I did a little bit more work on a different thing we're working on. There's, I think, two kind of two active pedal projects and then other ideas in the bank. So things are always moving. Yeah, nice. I can imagine. That's awesome. And then uh, as we as we mentioned earlier, we've got the, uh, the little mini ramper here. Um, can you just, uh, you know, this has been featured on quite a few of the videos um, and uh, you do another great video of walking through and explaining this because this little pedal is one of those pedals that you look at and you, I looked at the toggles. I'm like, uh huh. Yep. Um, I think I'm going to go try to program my garage door opener right now instead. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, and I had to watch the video. I don't get everything. I'm, yeah. You know, I'm sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't, instantly click for me um but once i did i was like oh that's what it does yeah and then you immediately think of all the different ways you can use that so what was the uh, genesis of this little guy I, it's actually tough to remember where this one started because um i think with a lot of our utility line of pedals it's usually a moment where somebody goes ah, i kind of wish that I could do this with my setup or i could make this happen but i can't really find a tool that that does that thing um, and so, you know, at some point we had the idea of just something to move an expression control around in an automated way. Um, and I think that it's interesting hearing you guys talk about, uh, you know, well, c complimenting me on the, the Dan explains it all stuff is, is, is really nice to hear. And it, it makes me think about how part of my goal, I think in, in product development and in the way I approach those videos and just generally my life in the gear world is that I really like surprising things and strange things and uh, things that are sometimes complicated to get to. You look at something like the the Red Panda Tensor. It's very confusing when you first plug it in. Okay, so it's not but just me. I No, <laughs> <laughs> me too. I put the speed knob at noon, which means it stops playing anything back. And I went, why is there That's no exactly sound? I put all the knobs at noon. <laughs> um, That's what I did. But I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I really like... Uh, do so to find those moments of surprise, but to get more and more people to be able to experience them. So I think there's a lot of ways to uh, do like MIDI interaction with pedals, and there's there's a lot of tools out there to make your pedals kind of move through presets and change settings based on all these different complicated parameters. 
And I think we just wanted to make a really simple tool that could just move a knob back and forth in an automated way. So anything that had an expression controller, this expression ramper will assign an LFO to it. So you you say like how far you want the knob to go in one direction, how far you want it to go in the other direction. So you think of that as like your heel and toe as you're using mm-hmm. expression control. And then you say how fast you want it to move from heel to toe and back and forth. And then you just hit a foot switch and it does that. And it's once once you kind of get how it works, it's suddenly very simple. You're like, oh yeah, okay, this this makes sense. And now I'm thinking about every expression enabled pedal that I own and how I might be able to coax some right, new sounds out right. of it. Well, I think and just so, even going from the triangle wave to the square wave, to me, uh, yeah. uh, that's, and I don't even know if you want to call it a, a, a square wave, but uh, the, you know, the, the square shape where it just kind of... Like, it is, yeah. 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 Um, to me, that's sort of the, the little sprinkle on top of that pedal. Yeah, to be able to just either either linearly move between two things or just skip between two settings. And, yeah. you know, especially when you're, say, like moving the time on a delay or, so, or something like that. It's such a different character depending on whether you move smoothly or jump to those different settings like that. Yep. Um, so, yeah, even that coaxes new sounds. And I remember with, with Expression Ramper, we that didn't take three years. It probably took a year or something like that from kind of idea to, to release. Now, Actually, it was probably two years, if I'm being honest with myself. I, I cannot remember these timelines. It feels like a year, but it was probably <laughs> longer than that. Um, but it's I remember as we were getting closer to that one, I was just afraid that somebody else was going to come out with it first. Because once we finished it and started testing it with all the expression pedals we had at the shop, and it just kept working, and it just kept doing cool things, I just kept thinking, like, we can't be the only people thinking about this. Like, mm. surely some other company is in development on this exact same idea, and we, like have to get to the market first. <laughs> right. And that didn't happen. It still hasn't happened. You know, I think Electro Harmonics did one that was the same size and you could uh, switch between two different assignable settings. And when I first saw it, I thought, oh no, is it is it ours? And then it's like, no, it's a, it's a different thing. Uh, mm. So I, it was just, yeah, really nice to be able to surprise people with that, with that idea as well. So we talked to, obviously, a lot of builders on the show, and a lot of people who are listening are, you know, coming up with their own ideas and, and, and endeavoring into, you know, the, the world of gear building, and whether it's a pedal or something else. I, that's one of the things that I feel like most people who are building anything at some point in time are gripped with the idea that, oh, no, if I don't hurry up and release this, someone else is going to, and my dream's going to disintegrate in front of me. Yes. Yeah. I think there's something about, I don't know if it's like imposter syndrome maybe, but it's like if you find a cool idea and you're excited about it, then suddenly you think, oh, well, if like, if some guy like me thought of it, then surely millions of other people have thought of this thing and everyone's trying to push their product to market. (laughs) Uh, When in fact, part of the fun of pedal making is that we all have unique voices and unique ideas. And so... Yeah. Two people can release the same genre of pedal on the same day and there'll be totally different approaches to the what what seems like it would be the same thing. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, and that's why we have so many different pedals and there's room for all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very, very cool. We're really excited about this. Um, I'm, uh, you know, no doubt your, your ears are going to be just r- ringing from all of the positive vibes that you continue to get. And I can only imagine some of the sounds that people are going to be coming up with this and, and sharing. And what, on that note, one thing I really did uh, appreciate in particular after going through the demo was, oh, and by the way, here's a little trick. You know, that the little thing at the end where someone may not have come to that conclusion, but that was an entire other sound altogether. So you probably want to go watch that video, people. Yes, yeah using both both I the love that. and the sunlight That's together. Right. Um, all right. Thank you so much, Dan. Um, everybody. Wait, so tell, just real quick, where can people go grab this? Uh, oldbloodnoise.com. Uh, and then we have we have a whole dealer network as well. So if you've got a local dealer you want to support, ask them about it. Um, hopefully they will they will have it as well. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's, it's uh, all over the world right now. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, we have got some pretty special stuff here from our buddy Jared all the way over in Nashville. That's right. Nash, Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time 
for one of our favorite games, especially Tony. He loves this game. Love it. It's called Tony's Island. Tony's no, Island. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Usually it's called Tony's Island. Right. <laughs> well, tonight we're going to call it the uh, Would You Rather. Tonight's Would You Rather. So you're walking down the street on your way to a gig and you forgot that you left your guitars in the public bathroom at a park. They're gone. Luckily, <laughs> they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> the bears. Why were you in the bathroom <laughs> right. in a park, though? That's the biggest. Mm, uh, at least it wasn't a rest stop. Yeah. Yeah. You, you wanted to take them with you so you wouldn't lose them, but you left them there anyway. Yeah. Well, lucky for you, you're in a band that is opening for Detroit Rock City Limits, a cover band mashing up Kiss songs. And Stevie Ray Vaughan songs is willing to let you borrow one of their only two guitars. So would you rather play the Strat stuck in position two, which is the out of phase, or Ace Fraley style three pickup Les Paul stuck in all three pickups? Mm. He doesn't shoot sparks. No. It no. doesn't shoot sparks either. Yeah, yeah. So so this is, uh, what's the name of that band again? The, the Detroit Rock City Limits. Oh, a little play <laughs> on Detroit Rock City and Austin, Austin City, City Limits. Limits. Yes. I see. Yeah, Stephen Ray famous for that. Yeah. It's... Uh, Probably a show you want to miss. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, anyways, wow. um, clearly those are two sounds that most people try to. They're, they're not necessarily the most pleasing sounds to play an entire show with. No, not at all. Uh, so, Jared, the would you rather is the Stratocaster stuck in position stuck in two. position two, which is out of phase, middle kind of, middle and bridge out of phase, middle and bridge, <laughs> um, or all three humbuckers at one time going full. Yeah, blast. yeah, yeah. That's eh. neither are very, especially a whole you, show. Yeah, a whole show. You, yeah, it's gonna you be got, fun. It's this is probably one of the one of the worst. <laughs> pick your pick the worst thing out of the two. Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, Tony. Geez. I mean, both of those are not very good positions. I, I mean, yeah, that out of phase strat <laughs> position and trying to play a show in that position. Yeah, uh, I I would just have to smash the guitar. I think. Um, and then all you're usually three. not that critical of sound, so. Yeah, that's <laughs> just when it comes to you. <laughs> and then all three humbuckers on. I mean, what a muddy mess that is. Yeah. I mean, the lesser of the two evils in my book, I guess, would be all three humbuckers. And then you just have to ride the volume control mm. constantly just to, I mean, because it's, it's, oosh. That's a, that's that's a neither one is a good option. So the lesser of the two evils, I'll do the all three humbuckers on. Okay, all right, uh, Jared, definitely going to be the Stevie Ray Vaughan, because um, that's going to be even though it's out of phase, um, it's a lot. You have a lot less going on there. There's less pickups mashed together, um, and you can actually control that tone much easier than a blob of six <laughs> coils wound instead of just two. But the the position two makes a pretty like wonky, honky, it, quacky it, it quack, is. right? It's the quack It sound. is, but that's when you get, you know, you get your tone ranger type pedal and, and you kind of counter react that with a different sound. So, But didn't you leave that in the restroom too? Yeah. I might, I may have. Yeah, <laughs> when you were watching, but I, I'm definitely taking this. I'm, I'm, you You're know, doing the strat. I, I work for Gibson, I know, but in this case, I got to go with the strat with, with the circumstance. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Dan, gotcha. how about yourself? Yeah, that is a tough one because normally I'm a single coil guy, and I know if I grab that strat, I'm gonna think it sounds amazing. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with it. It's probably tuned to E flat. That's great. And then the moment we start our first song, I'm going to go, oh, no, that's not the sound. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm trying to draw up, it, you know, for myself, the, the sound of three humbuckers at the same time. Uh, but I still think I'm going to ride that volume knob. I was thinking the same thing of like, do I have a volume knob? Can I just maybe get 
the output a little lower. It's still going to be muddy, but maybe there's something there because I think I I actually love that Strat sound, but not not live. That's like a great playing alone at home sound, but then I take it to the band. It's like, nope, that's not the sound. <laughs> playing so alone at, at home Paul unplugged. Would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So I think, yeah, I think I'm going to go Yay, three I've got, I've got company on my island. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because at least I know it's going to be a show I can look back on and be like, that was a wild one. I played that guitar with three humbuckers the whole time. It yeah. sounded terrible, but at least it was totally unconventional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to choose the Strat. No, it's I, impossible. I'm going to choose the yeah. Strat. You know why? Like wise choice, my friend. Because it's going to sound terrible, and then I can actually blame it on the Strat. Uh, there you go. So There you go. I've always got an angle. <laughs> well, look at it. It sounds like crap. Look at it. Yes. <laughs> so uh, that was a pretty fun one. Uh, Todd, thanks for sending that in. And, <laughs> hey, Todd. and Tony, hey, actually, Todd. Tony, Tony was a huge, I was the refiner. Yes. Yes. I, I came in with the idea yeah. and, and he, he, he did the Dan to, to a, a, a decent idea for a pedal. I gotta tell you, man, I, I swear that it's totally possible for me to leave a guitar in a public bathroom. Yeah, that's good. That's a whole <laughs> different show. I it, guess it is. Yeah, it is. But I'm just saying that I wouldn't put it past myself. In the right <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Tony, we got to thank a few people, and then we're going to say goodbye to our friend Dan. Yes, that That's is right. true, because at this point of the show, there is a very special group of people that we like to thank. These are our executive producers. Now, you might be wondering, what is an executive producer? And more importantly, how do I become one? Yeah. Well, the answer to the second one is... Go over to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs and check out some opportunities to sponsor this very podcast. Each of the levels has special prizes, thank you gifts, if you will. Things like barefoot buttons and picks and stickers and t shirts and keychains and all the good stuff. But as an executive producer, you get all the good stuff. And there's one thing more. Rob, what is that? Well, I'm going to say it because I always do. <laughs> you get to have your name read on the thing. <laughs> Plus, Rob's not here. That's right. <laughs> so He's fixing amps. I'm going to do that right now. You get your name read on the thing. Special thanks to these executive producers. Mr. Tom Barazin, Darren Gregory, Doug Christ. Michael Van Zant, Ken Sayers, Brian Robison, Michael Senchuk, Stefan Lamb, Anthony Lathrop, John Anglin, Brad Partridge, John Esterly, Justin Jones, James White, Matt Hart, Bill Gulligataz, Richard Kendall, Tig Harmon, John Jackson, Jason Rausch, Gary Cooper, Mark Garten, Elad Mazrahi, Mike D, Trevor Gunberg, Rick Calhoun, Anthony Gemolero, and John Halverson. All right. Woohoo. But wait, Todd. Yeah. Wait. There's another group, a higher, little higher echelon mm. of executive Who producers. Are they, old chum? We call them our grand boobas. Mm -hmm. These gentlemen, I think they're all gentlemen right now, have a special suite on the penthouse floor. Mm hmm. They have individual hot tubs filled with orange Kool-Aid. Mm. And they gargle with orange <laughs> Otter Pops. Yes. Are they smoking <laughs> orange cigars? They might be smoking orange cigars. They also have a fez that they must wear on their head while listening to the podcast. This is true. So special, special, special thanks to these grand poobas. I almost lost my breath. Yeah. Jonathan Jerusik, Corey Nigro, David Kaminga. Science of Sound. Cody Foster. Sean S. 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 Tommy Manasco. Adam Johnson. Steve Keys. Tim Nowak. Tyler Rines. James Pennington. LSJ Music Company. John Williams. Johnny Morales. Mal Sanders. Bob Crouch. Sam Jett. Michio Morakishi. Martin Cliff. And Hex Matos. Yes. Yay! All right. Thank you all so very much. 
Uh, your support is greatly appreciated, and it really, truly does help us out. Uh, we need to say a ginormous thank you to Dan. Oh, yes. Tonight. And uh, Dan, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was a pleasure Thanks, talking Dan. with you. Thanks for having me. It's good, good to you. hang with you guys. And massive congratulations on your release of thank you. The Sunlight. Now, where can people go find you or this pedal or whatever you want people to find? Yeah, so uh, all the all the old blood noise stuff is at old blood noise, oldbloodnoise.com. Uh, find me on Instagram at Dan from DSF, which is my my old band. And so I just thought that was a funny username because it references something that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yes. And uh, then, uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, plain 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 speak is my band. Um, and and how do you spell that one me, more that's time? That's my band. That's my company. Uh, P L A I N. S P E A K. Okay, is that available like on uh, Inst- uh, Instagram, uh, Sp- uh, Spotify, or anything? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're on we're on Spotify and Apple Music and all those all those places. Ditro could puts you uh, awesome and uh, Bandcamp as well. I'm gonna so, listen yeah. to that on the way home. There you go. Awesome. Yeah, you can you can find me a lot of places. <laughs> all right, sounds good. Uh, Tanya, yes, go ahead. You where can people know? find you? Where can people find me? Yes, is that what you're asking me? Yes, you talking to me? So. Dan's got to go to the bathroom or something. Come on. <laughs> He's on my island. I don't want to hear it. Go over to Pick Guardian's. Like, all are great. <laughs> yeah, aren't they? All three pickups. I love them. Go over to PickGuardian.com. Check out some of the things that I offer there in terms of custom pick guards. By and large, what I do is custom, custom work. So shoot me an email. Let me know what you need, what you're thinking about. I can give you some advice and uh, steer you in the right direction. And, and help take you f- find some awesome materials. Awesome materials. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Jared? Uh, all you have to do is get a hold of uh, me or Todd with, through the Guitar Knobs um, social media messaging. And please ask me any pickup stuff you, you want to know. Uh, and I'll be happy to answer. Yeah, and I think Jared's working on a, on a new... Uh, Instagram might en- entity soon, hopefully. I guess I guess I should. Now the cat's out of the bag. Now you have to. Mm-hmm. All right, you can send me an email, Todd at the guitarnobs.com. Love to hear what you think. And uh, you can DM me and any of the other fellows on Instagram at guitarnobs. We would love to hear from you. Send us your would you rathers. Mm, please. Yes. All right. Everybody, get out to the internet and get yourself a sunlight by Old Blood Noise Endeavors, and... Don't forget the Dweller. And... The Expression Ramper. The Expression Ramper, yep. All right. Thanks so much to Dan and Old Blood Noise Endeavors for helping us out tonight, and have a fantastic guitar week, and subscribe! I love you. (laughs) So I was watching some of your videos, and I think you need one of those prices, right? Oh, yeah. Bob Barker mics. No, that's... (laughs) Oh, yeah. No, Gene... uh, uh, oh, Gene Rayburn. Gene Rayburn. Oh, I yeah. Can't. Well, tell him I said thanks. I will. Rob, you can come in. No, and I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, yeah. Rob, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Is this good? No, oh, yeah, Jerry, that's, that's good. awesome. By it's good, awesome. I mean no. <laughs> good. How's, How's this? this? You got it. All you need is a little round thing on the end of a stick. Stick. This is going to be like going to the going to the salon and, and having somebody like massage your scalp for an hour. <laughs> Except it's Jared massaging your scalp, so it should, <laughs> you should be terrified for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Chopstick and stick a blueberry on it. So I, I went there to buy like, healthy, good vegetables like from farms and stuff. And the lines were so long to buy those really nice giant tomatoes and all the good stuff, you know, the farmer's stuff, you know. You just bought a corn Veggies. dog and left. But, oh, worse, man. I bought like a, <laughs> a, a big <laughs> peanut butter mud pie. <laughs> it was like 32 a, bucks, too. It's not cheap. What? A, did you just spill your brewski all over the thing, my Bob? <laughs> yeah you're like please yes like myself, this is- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right a raspberry a more of a grape a mushroom a large grape a fun mushroom <laughs> <laughs> let me get a little bit of that
We just found out what was in the woods. And I also uh, came home with a loaf of zucchini bread, which I will not share. Thank you. I appreciate stopping. Yes. (laughs) Saving me from stupidness. I appreciate it. Damn, son. I can see you later on tonight dipping the entire loaf into the pie and nibbling on it while watching re- <laughs> reruns. Well, we've got to put some butter on that, on that uh, zucchini bread, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> How about this? How about a little bit yeah. of this? How about a little bit of this? Jared, just one line. You want the this. You want, a little, you want the this other than the that. Hang right. on. Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's better. No right. compression. Clap, clap. Take Here five. We go. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've I've heard enough episodes to to, to not to listen kind of anymore. Deal, so. I see where that's going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having fun, so Good. hopefully it's, like hopefully it's fun for you guys as well. Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, Want to give me old clapperoo, old chum? <laughs> well, that's it for these knobs please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Visit our website at theguitarknobs.com for all of our past episodes, four on the floor blog, and other good stuff. You can connect with us on social too at our Facebook page and share your gear and stories on our Facebook group. Also be sure to check out our Instagram at guitar knobs. Catch you next time.